we invented time as Twente's introduction to mechanical engineering. The idea is that when a um, high school student starts their study in mechanical engineering, we rely on high school knowledge, we will refresh it a little bit, high school math and high school physics, and then tell them what is the mechanical engineering purpose of it all. We have five lectures that I give together with my colleague Dr. Jernan Schilder. And in each of these lectures there is a central theme. And we use as an example the pendulum, because the pendulum stands for a lot of mechanical engineering problems, but the pendulum also stands for time. If I ask students what is the time for a pendulum needed to swing back and forth, there is a formula, 2 pi square root L over G, they know this, it was given to them, never explained. And we derive it. The period of the oscillation, what does it depend on? You could think that it depends on gravity, on the mass of the pendulum, on the length of the pendulum, maybe on the uh, angle from which it is being released. So there's a lot of parameters involved in this problem. If you then start doing computations, it becomes very lengthy and very tedious calculation. Whereas if you would first look at the problem, start thinking about, okay, we are actually looking for something in seconds. We are looking for an oscillation time. How can I make seconds with all these parameters I invented? And then it turns out uh, that, for instance, the mass is not relevant. And I think that's the difference between the university and high school, is that uh, we are not here to just substitute numbers in formulas, but we are able to determine and derive these formulas ourselves from scratch for complicated systems, of which we cannot find the answer in books. We hope to give you an initial good starting point. How to draw the, what we call a free body diagram. Yeah? You have to b draw the ball of the pendulum and you draw the accelerations and the forces. And by making a nice drawing using color pens, a red pencil for the forces, a green pencil for the accelerations, a blue pencil for the velocities, you don't get confused, you don't make mistakes. If you do all these things correctly, and patiently, I'm absolutely certain that in the rest of your bachelor's study, you will benefit from that. In order to solve difficult problems, you really need this systematic approach. And what we saw is that um, students, if they don't really understand the systematic approach, they might survive the first couple of courses, like the first year courses, maybe the problems are simple and they can do it on inside. But then later on, if the problems become difficult and you lack this systematic way of thinking, that's where all the problems start. If you do it in the right order, in the right way that we show them, you can compute incredibly complex things like the mechanics of a fluid. And, and we, we got the message from the students last year that they really loved it. I like two things about time. The first thing is that it's really the very first thing the students get. What I really find an honorable task is to set the scene, is to teach these students the most important basic things of mechanical engineering. In terms of how the lectures are done, I really like it a lot that I do it together with Rob. This morning I was at the lecture and I was watching the students. I saw all these pencils, I see all these faces, looking at my colleague. Everybody is silent, paying attention. They ask a lot of questions. We, we really invited them to do that. Uh, while I'm telling it you, I, I'm getting uh, goosebumps. I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely proud. <laughs>